So in this video, I'm going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation. And so let's give a summary of the important facts of oxidative phosphorylation. And so the electron transport, it's essentially an electron transport, and it's located in the membrane. But in eukaryotes, like ourselves, um, more specifically in the cristae of the mitochondria. And so what the purpose is, is to establish a hydrogen gradient to make ATP. And we'll talk about how exactly that happens in a second. And so now let's get a diagram of it. Let me clear this. And so here we have a good diagram of what's actually occurring in the whole process. And so just so you have an idea, this over here, this whole region is the intermembrane space. And so remember that it takes place in the mitochondria. This, the membrane right here is a mitochondrial membrane which is also called the cristae. Now let me clear this. And so what happens is you start off with an electron and the electron gets transported across and each molecule that it gets transported to is more electronegative than the previous one which means it's more likely to it has more of an attraction to the electron so it pulls it more that's how the electron moves and so it's important to remember that here, NADH, um, this is a molecule that essentially delivers hydrogen and then essentially it acts as a carrier and picks up more hydrogens. But the hydrogens must be combined with oxygen to make water. So, as you see in this blue, um, you need hydrogens to make water and so if you don't have an oxygen, the NADH can't release the hydrogen to make water, and so it just doesn't. And then NADH isn't recycled, and as a result, this whole process can't occur. Like, you can't pump hydrogen across, and that's why you need oxygen for this. So let me clear this. And so it's important to remember the oxygen acts as an hydrogen acceptor. That's why you need oxygen to make energy slash ATP. And so once a hydrogen gradient is established, like there's a lot of hydrogens up here, what happens is the hydrogen gets pumped through through the molecule called ATP synthase and it turns ADP and phosphate into ATP. And it's important to note that m the bulk of ATP, like a, the vast majority of ATP made from cellular respiration uh, comes from oxidative phosphorylation. So it comes from this uh, process. And so the number of ATP varies greatly. I mean, people still haven't established like a f uh, key number that everyone agrees on but for our purposes um, we say that like 23 to 25 ATP come from this and then there's only a total of 27 to 29 ATP per one glucose molecule and believe it or not, it's actually 
it's 29% efficient and some people might so 29% efficient and some people might think oh that's pretty crappy but actually most of the household appliances are only 2% 3% efficient so we actually have a very efficient way of making energy and not giving off as much wasted energy as heat and so just to summarize a little bit let me clear some of this so for ATP is from glycolysis and the Krebs cycle and then the rest is from oxidative phosphorylation 23 to 25 now let me clear that 23 to 25 ATP and so a formula that might be important to know the formula for cellular respiration is essentially the opposite of photosynthesis so let me clear this so you get C6H12O6 plus 6 oxygen gives you 6 H2O's heat and 27 to 29 ATP.